What's going on boys and welcome back to the channel. Today we have some things to fix as far as this car and heat goes. If you guys have been watching the channel for a little bit, you would know that this car unfortunately gets a little bit hot under boost when it's hot outside, like 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. This thing gets hot quick. Like we're talking, it's creeping up to 200 and getting up to 200 under boost and then you gotta chill and cool it off. And you can't even really cruise at highway speeds because the turbo's spinning and it's still working a little bit to make a pound or two and uh, the temps just keep climbing but it's pretty obvious why if you guys have been watching the channel you would know but anyways let's get this video started let's start talking about it ripping parts off and fixing it all right so let's have a chat about why this car is getting as hot as it is basically it's just due to the setup. Let's take a closer look and you guys will understand. So we only have a half size rad because if you can't tell we can't fit a full size rad. We have a front mount intercooler that blocks off the rad, but you have to keep in mind they're not even close to touching. The rad is on the inside of the core support and the intercooler is on the outside of the core support. So you have a good like five, six inches of room between the two and I cut out the entire bumper so there's tons of airflow. I'm probably going to have to cut out these pockets as well just to channel more airflow into the engine bay. But half size rad, even though it's aluminum and bigger and better than the OEM rad in the last half rad that I had, we have an aluminum fan shroud. And yes, this fan is okay, especially for NA applications, but it's smaller and doesn't pull quite as much volume as even that of the OEM fan. But if you can't tell with our intercooler pipe in the way and pretty much everything in the way, there's no room to put the stock fan on. So. What I might do is get a spall fan, a 12 inch spall fan that rips higher CFM than this. Cause this is 1150 CFM and I can get up to about a 1500 CFM spall fan that will fit. Only caveat with that is a spall fan is literally more than this entire radiator fan and shroud setup combined. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Another thing, we got our downpipe made and it had to kind of swing out, go into the core support and then go under the car because there wasn't enough room between the slave and the side of the rad. And either way, even if we did manage to go that way with the three inch pipe, it wouldn't have affected much. It would still be heating up the rad a lot. So the downpipe is too close to the rad. And if we can see down there, that shiny piece of metal right below the wastegate right there, that's the dump tube that's also right beside the radiator. So what I can do today is take off the downpipe, take off the dump tube and start the process of heat wrapping both of these. It shouldn't be too, too bad, especially with the parts out of the car. It's just a big pain in the butt to actually get this downpipe out of the car. That's going to be the biggest struggle today. Um, wastegate dump tube is super easy. It's just a V band. It'll come right off. No problem. But that's what I can do today. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a video on heat wrapping the downpipe and the wastegate screamer pipe. And another thing that I can do is get my fabricator. We can drill into the core support and make a heat shield that comes out, goes over and out. So it kind of blocks off the slave, the rad from the heat that is caused in excess from these two exhaust pieces being right beside the radiator. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and jack up the front of the car, take the front bumper off, start to take off the down pipe, then the wastegate dump tube, and we should be set to start heat wrapping over on the bench. But that's our plan right now. Get some heat wrap, get my fabricator to eventually make a heat shield that goes between the two, and then maybe even gold tape the side of the rad and the heat shield, just so it deflects some of the heat that's being built up. Because as you can see, there's a lot of heat right here and not a lot of cooling right here. So it's kind of a recipe to heat up. But let's get this car jacked up. Let's start ripping parts off. We should be met. All right, now with the car all jacked up, secured, and ready to go. We can crawl under the car, rip off the V-band, rip off the wastegate down pipe, or dump pipe, and then we can start to take the core support shroud off and then unbolt the down pipe from the top and hopefully, fingers crossed, be able to wiggle our way out of here because it's kind of a nightmare, but we'll see how it goes. All 
All right guys, wastegate dump tube is off. Everything is good to go. Downpipe is disconnected from the bottom. Now it's just time to work these five Allen key bolts. Um, take off this little Circuit Hero cooling plate I have and then fingers crossed and hopefully we can just finagle it out of there. But wastegate dump tubes off, all V bands are off. Let's take the top stuff off, we should be met. All right, boys, so I've got everything stripped off. To get the downpipe off, I needed to take off the wastegate, and I'm glad I did because I just noticed something. I'm gonna show you this wastegate here. Can you guys tell what's wrong here? Can you see that you can see through the valve on the other side? And maybe this bright silver shiny ring that may or may not have been in the wastegate box and may or may not sit perfectly flush in there supposed to be in it. I'm no rocket scientist, but I don't think you're supposed to see through the freaking valve. And if you guys have been watching the channel, you know that we have been making less than 10 pounds of boost with a 10 pound spring. And I feel like that might just be why. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to have this goddamn ring in there. I'll admit it. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm glad we found our boost leak. All right, boys, well, now that we learned that I'm a dummy and uh, we fixed our boost leak because I didn't have the freaking valve seat in the damn wastegate. Oops. Um, it's time to heat wrap this shit. So let's take a peek. We've got our downpipe and our wastegate, a bunch of heat wrap, a bunch of ties. Hopefully I can do it in one shot, one metal tie here, one metal tie here, one metal tie here, and one metal tie here. Obviously I'm gonna start with the big chungus first, the downpipe. Hopefully I have enough left over to at least just wrap this tiny little wastegate dump tube and all should be mint. It's super straightforward. You literally just wrap it a few times over and then you start to work your way down, hold it there, put the metal tie on, keep going about your business, put another metal tie on, so on and so forth. We literally heat wrapped this whole header when we did the B16 NA swap a few years ago on this channel. So I'm gonna set you guys up on a time lapse and have fun watching me struggle with this damn heat wrap.
Boys, I fucked up. I am literally covered head to toe in fiberglass. Fuck. My whole body is on fire. All right guys, well even though I'm covered in fiberglass, we got the hardest piece of the puzzle heat wrapped and it came out sick. Let's go ahead and check this thing out. Custom three inch down pipe, fully heat wrapped. It's tight, double banded up here, single banded up top. Came out absolutely sick. Nothing's loose, it's all tight. I can pick it up like this, shake it around. It's completely tight, everything is good to go. Heat wrap came out sick, I got no holes, I got no spots, so we are all good to go on that. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this over here for now, and then we are going to move on to the wastegate dump tube, which is right here. This one's small, it should be a lot easier, and I'm gonna try to avoid getting fiberglass all over myself because, let's face it, Right now, I look like a holographic freaking Frosty the Snowman. It ain't fun. I feel like I jumped into a fire ant pit. It's honestly not the worst, but like the worst part of it is dealing with it and washing the clothes and having it go everywhere at home is the issue now. I can deal with the itch and the burn, but like this is just a pain in the ass. All right, boys, and there we have it. Wastegate is heat wrapped and we're all good to go. Let's go to install both these pieces and we should be mint. All right, guys, well now that I'm covered in fiberglass, we have our wastegate dump tube here, all nice and tightly wrapped, no holes or bubbles or anything. And same with our downpipe. Now that that and that is done, it's time to reinstall with the proper firing ring in the wastegate. I feel like a biggest idiot for not thinking of that but we have the firing ring in the wastegate now. It's there, it's good. We're all set. I'm gonna go ahead, fish this down pipe down here, let it kind of dangle, put the wastegate on, uh, and then we're gonna fasten up the down pipe and then fasten up the wastegate dump tube. We should be mint. thousand years later.
All right, guys, well, there you have it. I am absolutely beat. I'm itchy as hell. That downpipe was a pain in the ass to get in. I think it probably took me half an hour to just get the downpipe put in the car so I could bolt it up. But, um, wastegate is tight. Um, downpipe bolts up here are tight. Downpipe V-band is tight and the dump pipe V-band. Let's take a look at the work and get the hell out of here. So fiberglassy. All right, and here you have it, top-down view, boys. We have the downpipe heat wrap. It honestly doesn't look too, too bad. I don't mind the look of it at all. A heat blanket for the turbo would be amazing as well. Just kind of keep the heat localized here instead of letting it disperse, because obviously this gets hot. It's turning like blue. Um, I think we found why we're only making five pounds of boost, and it's because the firing and the wastegate. Now that firing is installed and good to go. There is our down, our wastegate dump pipe right there. It is like touching the radiator, but just barely, just skimming it. It's just the heat wrap. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. It is a straight shot into the down pipe right there. So I might just get the uh, fabricator to recircuit into the down pipe. If that gets it further away from the radiator, which it should do, because it would go right into the downpipe, which has got about an inch and a half from the rad, instead of just being a dump pipe. But we'll revisit that at our next fabricator appointment, because we also have a vibrant ultra power or ultra quiet muffler with a four inch tip to go on this. So he'll do the muffler, make a heat shield, and then maybe we can look at recircing the wastegate back into the downpipe just for heat issues. Because obviously that's just pumping out hot exhaust gas and uh, it's right beside and basically touching the radiator. But everything is in, everything is good to go. If we crawl down here and look up, it's kind of hard to see, but there's the wastegate dump tube, there's the downpipe, everything is tight, snug, and good to go. Yeah, everything is tight, snug, and good to go. So. I'm tired from wrestling with exhaust, so I'm gonna end this video on the damn floor. There you have it, heat wrapped. We're working on heat dissipation, and I would take the car out to see if that wastegate firing fixed the boost leak, which I know it will, because you can't use it without one like I've been doing, idiot. Um, but it's torrentially downpouring outside for the last two days, and I don't wanna spend three hours detailing this car after I just did that not two weekends ago before the hot night in the city show. So. I'm gonna call it here on the floor. We'll catch you guys in the next one. And don't forget, if you wanna see all the updates and all the news on this car and the build and the future of this channel, first go ahead and follow us on Instagram. Link will be in the link tree in the description and in the channel bio, and it's also just Brash Garage on Instagram. Anyways, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Peace out.